Angela here and welcome to Let's Walk London. I am in Isha, Surrey. Good afternoon everyone. It is a beautiful March Sunday afternoon. I have been away from filming for a long time. So missed it. Um, try not to point into somebody's house here. It's gorgeous, I will tell you. We are looking at the pub, the Wheat Chief on the Green. And we are on Isha Green. Isha, Surrey. It's good to be back. Summer is coming, it says on that sign, and so are we. Open April the 12th. We are still locked down at the moment. I come here to do supermarket shopping, so I figure that gives me a good excuse to do some filming while I'm here. I am not sure what direction I'm looking at this moment in time. I don't know if you can see in the distance. You can see for miles. Um, and one of the sort of key exciting things of Isha back in the day was that you could see all the surrounding countryside in the distance. We are not heading that way. If we continue to go that way, um, we will get to the ski centre, actually. Because it's a high point, there's a ski centre there. But instead, we are going to head back towards Isha High Street. Even though we're technically still in lockdown, a lot of traffic. It is a Sunday. People are trying to get the fresh air. We're due to start rain and windy weather again fairly soon. We've had a fairly still couple of weeks weather-wise. It's been grey, it's been cold. The weather had a go at some snow a while back but didn't come to much. And so we're in March and really looking forward to spring now. We're going to head towards the high street. Blossoms I can see in the distance over there. I tend to come here a fair bit. Garson's farm isn't far from here. They've got a great sort of vegetable and fruit farm, garden centre, those types of things. I'll be doing a bit of Isha history with you today. Might not be the best history of Isha you ever hear, but hopefully there's a few interesting details. Isha's history kind of is tied to the coaching trade and the coaches that went from London to Portsmouth and Southampton for about 300 years. This was actually, not quite this road here, but this was actually, I don't think this road anyway, was the main route from Fleet Street down to um, Portsmouth. All sorts came through here, all sorts. From the very poshest to the very less poshest. Right, I'm gonna see if I can cross the road without pressing the button. Yep, I can. I don't like pressing buttons. Um, just in case anybody's left any germs on the buttons. So here is the church. I've actually forgotten the name of that church. I did remember it and then I forgot. Anyway, we're going to head this way slightly around in a small circle towards the high street and get past these people a little bit. There we go. Thank you. fair to say Isha's a bit posh and as I said if we head in that direction we'd go to Garson's farm and a Walton-on-Thames so Walton-on-Thames in that direction 
Oh, this is Park Road. I'm not sure there's any particular park it's referring to. And here's the church, whose name I've forgotten. Sorry, guys and girls. Look it up or post it in comments if you know better than this uh, idiotic person who forgot the name of the church. Looking there, it's five past three. Oh, this is Church House, 49 Park Road, Isha Green. Help yourself. Oh, they're giving away candles. Oh, I can't. I don't have a bag. I really like those candles. I love candles. Is there something in that that Church House is giving away the candles? I don't know. So, fairly sort of typical for this area row of terraced houses. As you're well aware, I'm no architect, but taking a guess it's Victorian. Massive growth in this area during the Victorian era. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Very much beloved. High society, royalty. And then of course we got the race course. Trying to change size so we can get a little bit more light on screen. So yes, in this area you'll see lots of terraced roads like this one. Fair amount of movement on the property market. What with there being a global pandemic and all. Isha Green Baptist Church. I know that because there's a sign that tells me it is. We're starting to get to the old Portsmouth Road here, A308. And I'm going to be telling you about Claremont House in a moment. Sorry, the hand's gone to sleep. It's pretty cold, it's nine degrees, but you know, one of those days when it feels colder. That slight breeze that makes you feel colder than you want to. I'm going to try and cross over. It takes a while to get across these roads. As I said, a fair bit of traffic. So down towards that direction um, takes you towards Cobham and the A3 actually. Um, and Claremont House. So Claremont House was kind of the centre of life here. Um, really grew to be sort of frequented by the aristocracy, royalty, was built in the uh, 18th century, 1709. Architect, playwright, courtier and spy, Sir John Vanbrugh bought the area then known as Chargate Farm and Wood to build himself an elegant retreat and develop the garden. And it became a much loved home, did Claremont. Uh, British and foreign royalty. Princess Charlotte, Prince Leopold added features like the Camellia Greenhouse. Then it got broken up. So many things do. It's now owned by the, um, I was just about to say the NHS, the National Health Service. <laughs> no, it's not. It's owned by the National Trust now. Right, this is the Albert Arm. So this, you know, recognises the fact that Isha really grew during the Victorian era. Quite the boom town for the upper crusts. And people who sort of stayed at Claremont would then contribute um, stuff to the local town or village, whatever you want to call it. And one of the things that was contributed was actually the water fountain. Looking over there, I can actually see a water fountain. So I'm going to take my life in my hands and attempt to cross the road in a mo. So here we are looking down Isha High Street in its current form. I'm going to try and get into the middle. Even on this road there's a car. Which is of course a Mercedes. Because as I said, we're at the posh end of town. Still waiting. Somebody let me across, thank you. Looking at the Bear Hotel, which is a very significant um, 
turn it, I'm pressing a button. So the Bear Hotel is a very uh, significant stopping off point during the uh, coaching, uh, I suppose, three, uh, 300 years. So you could sort of change over your horses here and um, people on the stagecoaches and what have you uh, could get some ham or some beer or a pie, something like that. Here we go, crossing the road. And the whole coaching uh, routes, you know, kept going lots of sort of pubs and inns along the way, all the way from Fl Fleet Street through to um, Portsmouth. So what do we have here? Presented to the parish of Isha by Her Majesty Queen Victoria, 1877. That's okay, don't worry. <laughs> He's a star now. He's going to be a star to all of you. Um, so yes, this actually replaced the original one. In 1864, when the Comte de Paris married Princess Isabella of Spain, he spent part of his honeymoon at Claremont, the height and apex of the Isha social structure at the time. And so he presented the village with a water pump. But uh, the original one had to be cut off. I don't think it was very safe. So Queen Victoria, Queen Vic, gave them this one. And there's a little bit of information. The site of a pump given to the village by the munificence of HRH, the Comte de Paris. There you go. I already knew that. So we're going to head up this way. It's a Sunday, so things tend to be shut anyway. However, Sunday during lockdown. And so everything will be shut anyway. So here's the sort of central point where sort of all the traffic heads in different directions. Um, in that direction is the A3, uh, which is the bypass. So originally the coaching route went along the Portsmouth Road behind me, uh, but in the 1970s, not run, it was decided to detour the A3, the main route from London down to Portsmouth around Isha rather than through Isha. So here we are at the Bear Hotel. I'll get onto that shortly. Just going to pop around the corner. It's a very cute little church around here. We are on Isha Park Avenue. Fair bit of building work going on. It's a pretty popular place to live anyway. Um, so you can see we've got some new build type of structures over here. The Civic Centre is just through there. I have parked my car. Um, some people looking at the sign, which is unfortunate because that's what I want to do. So this is St George's Church. I'll show you a picture there. Oh, it's got the wrong time on it. It says it's five past five, so I need to change the time. So this is Isha's oldest public building and one of the earliest Anglican churches. Most of the structure is 16th century Tudor. I think it's a very cute little spot this one. As I said, the Civic Centre through there. And we're going to head back this way, down the high street. And I will take you tell you something about Isha as a trading post. A, sorry, not trading post, staging post. Wasn't that much trade, a lot of agriculture. Uh, quite a small population. So how is everybody? How's lockdown in your part of the world or your part of the country? We're sort of waiting to reopen here now. Spring is approaching. Fingers crossed. So if you look straight ahead, that would take you back to Isha Green, where I started filming. And here we are at the Bear. So let me just get my notes up about the coaching uh, stuff that used to come through here on the Portsmouth Road. So this was formerly known as the Portsmouth Turnpike Road, one of the oldest thoroughfares in the kingdom. Charles II and every English king ever crowned would see his ships at Portsmouth and so would walk along, uh, walk along, no, come on a horse uh, and carriage along this high street. And here was a stagecoach stopping point. And Isha actually as a town grew solely because it was a stopping point on the stagecoach route. 
And this is where they would stop, at the bear. Okay. And as I said, it pretty well for the sort of pubs along the old Portsmouth Road. They could sell their beers, their wares, their foods, their pies. Uh, but when the coaching uh, business stopped and the railways came along, kind of shifted things along, removed their business. Now I actually see, I'm not in the middle now, I can see what looks like another water pump there. I'm not going to cross over because I can't get across the road. <laughs> but if you can just see in the trees, there's another little water pump there as well. I don't know if that's the size of the old one. Somebody pop it in comments if you know. The first staging point, so once you left London and you sort of gone um, sort of Fleet Street to end, you would stop at Robin Hood, which is at Kingston Vale. And then the next would be at the Bear, which we've just seen in Isha. And some what are known as pair horse coaches were known to run daily from Isha to the Bolt in Tun in Fleet Street. And these also called at the Swan in Thames Ditton. I can't remember if we saw the Swan Pub when I did my Thames Ditton walk with you. So here we are. Nisha looking very modern now. These roads were terribly dangerous during the coaching uh, era. Robberies, bad quality roads. Uh, they used to transport sailors down to Portsmouth. There's a story that a, a coach overturned once on the ice and the sailors were so drunk that they were actually asleep as people tried to right the coach. Now, people like Samuel Pepys, Lord Nelson, Duke of Wellington, the many historical celebs that would have passed through here. And mail coaches as well came into general use, as I say, until the railways um, kind of came along and replaced it. So there's Pizza Express. Why do I show you Pizza Express? Because we used to go there for pizza back in the day. Now I'm going to show you the name of this. It's Asel, Asel Place. That's the old name for Isha. So when Isha uh, was in the Doomsday Book, so Isha appears in the Doomsday Book. 1086, yeah, and it was Asel or Asela in the Doomsday Book part of the Saxon feudal division of Elmbridge 100 and now we're looking at the Everyman Theatre or Theatre Cinema Cinema looks more like a theatre I think anyway nice old building very comfortable I've heard good good stories about watching a film there the Good Earth massively long time that that one's been there um, Loads of people have been there, never been myself. It's really weird, you kind of want to go to places and end up going to other ones instead. Heading down towards the race course now. Farrow and Ball. I think they're known for their posh paint, aren't they? Posh paint, Farrow and Ball. There we go, We've got a closed and another enclosed um, living area up there. When I started on the green, the place that I was filming at was one of those. <laughs> Dachshunds, always reliable for a nice bark from Dachshund. Small dog syndrome. Then we are over at the Civic Centre through there. Parked up over there. It's a Sunday, so I didn't have to pay. Costa coffee, I really wouldn't mind getting a coffee from there. What have we got? Imagine they've still got a lot of Christmas stuff left over. Yep, toffee spice latte. That sounds like a Christmas latte to me. So I'm going to try and cross over in a sec. I need to cross here. 
possível. Interested to know what this is. Is this residential here? What is this? Sandown House, number one High Street. Answers on a postcard is Sandown House. Oh, I can see there's a plaque. Somebody lived there, but I can't get close enough to see who it was. Uh, any answers? Number one High Street, Sandown House. Is it a significant place? I don't know. I better press the button. I have anti back to my hands. So back on the Portsmouth Turnpike. Just let these people come through. The train station here, it's about a mile from here or so, had a number of different names, including on maps until 1933, it was known as Isha and Clermont train station here. As you can tell, the a really busy road. I quite often get stuck in traffic jams here, uh, up and down the high street. Now, I don't know what this is. Anyone? Anyone want to jump in with that one? No idea what that is. Interesting. Jump in, anyone. Please do. Once the railways came along, Isha kind of benefited from its reputation. I think um, Henry VIII actually annexed um, back in his day, Henry the annexed some of the sort of area around here for his courtesans and what have you. Uh, Queen Victoria, as I said, very regular visitor back at Claremont. And in the 19th century, it's uh, described, I'm gonna put the sources for you, um, where I got the information from for the history. Uh, I'll put that on the description. Um, but it's described as a well-ordered community basking in the shadow of its royal connection, spiritual welfare provided for by a variety of churches, a national school to provide basic education for the children of the poorer inhabitants, and a new country county brigade fire engine to deal with conflagrations. This area, uh, traditionally, it sort of had, I think the governor of the Bank of England lived here, sort of London barristers. Once the trains, uh, train station was here, it was nice and handy for London. So sort of uh, old members of the British Empire and traders and stockbrokers and all that type of thing. It kind of got a reputation. And um, there was an article in one of the Surrey newspapers from 2015 saying it's one of the highest uh, taxable areas in the country. A lot of this area traditionally um, was sort of, you know, wealthy people that lived in uh, woodlands, basically the great big house in woodlands. And slowly the sort of big parcels of land got sold off. And Sandown Racecourse was actually one such parcel of land. Here we are. Sandown. Sandown race course. Absolute leader in its field at the time. Transformed the racing industry. Not sure if you can see in the distance. Uh, there's a tr train just about to go through. There we go. around the suburban lines. 
if it's a sort of more stopping service, the next stop along is Surbiton. I kind of think of Isher as sort of the next high street along from Surbiton High Street. So this used to be Sandown House, um, previously farmland attached to Sandon Priory, whose entire brethren died of the plague in 1338 and it continued as farmland until the 1860s. As I said, places started coming up for sale then as people sold off parcels of land. And there was a huge battle as to what to do with this land. The local residents were horrified. There was plans to build a what was then known as a lunatic asylum, um, a small town or a race course. And interestingly, residents uh, lobbied more for the lunatic asylum from certain quarters than a race course. Because a race course was more or less a den of ill repute, not a place that nice people wanted to go back in the day. I have been in. Great. Uh, it's, it's a pretty good experience, actually. We had to leave early because the lad was with me and he was young then. He was about six and autistic six-year-olds cannot cope uh, with an area like this. It's too much for them. <laughs> but it was transformational. What they did here, the one thing they did that no other race course did, they put a fence around it and people wouldn't normally have to pay entrance uh, to go into a race course back then. So they charged entry. They put a fence around it, charged entry. And this was a, seen as a way to keep out the low lives, the cheats, the crooks that would normally frequent a race course. The other big thing they did, so they had a nice, a nice posh stand for the wealthy, even if they were the badly behaved wealthy. Um, they also had a place where the ladies could go. So this was unthinkable that the wealthy could bring their wives and their daughters and maybe their mothers, I suppose, to the races. They normally just had to wait outside on a, on a kind of on a stagecoach or something, or, you know, coaching horses. But it was believed that the gentlemen and ladies of London society would be attracted if they allowed the ladies somewhere nice to go. And this was uh, Sir Wilfred Brett and his young partner, I don't know how to say the name, H-W-F-A. It sounds Welsh to me, Hufa, Williams. And they, they saw off the arguments against them and built Sandown. And it became really well known as the Ladies Racecourse Par Excellence. And the club had 1,800 members, the same figure as the local population. So that would double the local population. They were approached by BBC Television, the stewards, in 1939 um, to film a race. They said, absolutely not. You are not coming here to film a race. That's on the 24th of January, 1948. Two steeplechases and a hurdle race were broadcast by the BBC. That is the first time that horse racing was televised live anywhere in the world. And just nine years later, in 1957, Sandown Park staged the first ever sponsored race, the Whitbread Gold Cup. That's a pretty historic race course as they go. These days, as I said, uh, pretty high rate of taxation going on here. Some famous residents include Morris Gibb, George Harrison, Chris Tarrant, Gary Lineker, Frank Lampard. And as I said, I'm pretty sure Mourinho used to live around here somewhere as well, and some others. Um, not necessarily known to all of us. I'm going to head a bit further down. There's an old stone I want to show you, if that makes any sense. Some of you that know local history might, might know which stone I want to show people. Um, along the sort of Littleworth um, side, there's a nice pond at Littleworth as well. I think it's Littleworth Common. I used to take the lad there a lot to find frogs. I used to find a lot of frogs. 
And these gates, are these the gates that are from Kensington? I don't know if these are gates from Kensington Gore. Kensington House in Kensington Gore was demolished and they acquired the ornamental gates. I don't know if these are said ornamental gates and those over there. They might be. So we're heading out of Isha High Street now. The station is actually down in this direction. I just find it a little odd. I mean, understandable, I suppose, but Isha train station is actually quite a distance from Isha High Street. Whereas I live in Surbiton and the train station is right on the high street. And also Kingston the train station is right in the middle of Kingston. I'm so glad the weather's been nice. Lots of different styles of houses here. A lot of new builds. These tend to be kind of private roads and um, dead ends as well. So the roads around here, there aren't really any easy cut throughs. There are a few, but not very many easy ones. So most of the traffic is funneled this way. And as I said, the A3 goes around Isha. Those of you who regularly follow the channel will have noticed I haven't uploaded since I did the snowy walk video. It's simply a matter of lockdown, time of year work-wise. This is my busiest time of the year for teaching. We're locked down. It was quite hard to identify areas that, you know, I didn't want to break the rules or anything. I can't claim that this is my business. If this was my work, then I could continue to travel to film, but it's not. I get paid a salary to do a different job. So kind of felt to stay nearby. And the weather actually has been pretty gray. It's been sort of five degrees, cold wind, gray, not ideal filming conditions. So here we are coming on to Littleworth Common over there. I've got a real soft spot for that. Even though it's really noisy and trafficy, it's actually the air is quite polluted here. Actually, um, there's a lovely pond or two here, and we used to go in the spring and early summer and find the little the little frogs and try not to scare them. As I said, more new builds. I've seen a fair few go up and down over the years through here. We're actually heading down towards Café Rouge. And Café Rouge is on the site of an old pub. Go on, local historians. I'll bet you know what I'm referring to. Building site here. Wonder what it's going to be. Looks like old Victorian maybe here now. A right mishmash. I'm assuming that's protected land over there. So it's never been built on. Not while I've been here anyway. I don't know if you'd be interested in woodland walks. I do a fair few of those. I've said before it can be hard to make countryside interesting sometimes, beaches and woodlands and fields. But if you'd be interested, happy to do some walks of that nature. So 
So these appear to be Grant's cottages. They do a fair amount of management over there on the common. So you go through areas, sometimes they're completely being sort of chopped down to preserve the environment a bit. And sometimes you have stuff right up to your waist, barging your way through. Sandown Gate, looks new buildy to me. And here we have a majestic wine warehouse. I'm not a member of that one. Actually, I did join the um, British Wine Society. Is that what it's called? British Wine Society? Bought husband lifetime membership for a Christmas present. Maybe some decent wines, I must say. So we're now approaching what would have been an old pub called the Orleans Arms. No, not this building here. The next one here, which is a Cafe Rouge now. So this would have been the Orleans Arms. And outside of it, you know, I've been to the uh, Café Rouge myself quite a few times. Didn't know there's a great big stone outside, just walked straight past it. And this is the White Lady Milestone, with the names and distances of lots of different towns and villages. Here it is, well over a century old. Miles to Ember Court, Hampton Court, Walton Bridge and Chertsey. So we've got eight miles, five miles, two miles and one mile. So here we have, I can see how many miles to Hyde Park? 13. 13 miles to Hyde Park Corner, 15 miles to Westbridge. I don't know where Westbridge is. 15 miles to Southwark, 3 to Kingston, 6 to Ewell, and 12 to Croydon. And on this side, oh, yep, some more. So we've got 57, 57 miles to Portsmouth and 40 miles to Guildford. We've got Hazelmere, Dorking, Rygate. So I think I'm going to stand here and cross the road before I head back up. Uh, Isha High Street. Let me see if I can straighten this up a bit for you. There we go. So here we have Littleworth Common looking really beautiful in the afternoon spring sunshine. There we are. I'll just pop over here before I go back up the high street. Leaving you, as I said, we get frogs here uh, sort of spring, early summer. That water level looks quite high actually. Looking absolutely lovely today. Yep, usually take photos here because it's, it's very pretty. There's horses and things like that. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this walk along Isha High Street. I very much hope I will see you again soon. Bye bye.